entry number 58, date 6 of April, time 9.30. Deviation from the regular time caused by staff member incapacity. No one is gonna listen to that. You can't as well say I overslept. Because you drank yesterday? No, no. Today, we will monitor the samples from the last session and determine how successful the decontamination process was in samples with different exposure doses. Additionally, we will evaluate the values of ambient doses in observed areas. Masha, um, help me with things. Alexander, I told you not to call me Masha. We are not in the Soviet Union. And I am your colleague. Would it hurt to say please for one? And one thing. I am sorry, Marie, but it hurts my throat trying to pronounce it as it should be in French. There's so many things I can do, but you cannot teach such an old dog new tricks. Plus, Alexander is Sasha, and Masha and Sasha sounds funny. Ha ha, d'accord. You don't need to injure your throat when addressing me. Almost everyone here pronounces my name as they please anyway. I have to get used to that. So what did you want? I was just too lazy to get up and get the box with the Cryptococcus nelformans. You know, I have all the bones. You talk like you're about to die. I lived through the apocalypse. My dear, no chance I'm gonna die now. But <clears throat> speaking of health, did you take your eogen pills today? You know we have some field work to do tomorrow. Of course I took them. Here you go. Thank you, Dragaya. Do you need help with recording the values? No, no, just don't talk when I'm saying the number. You're always talking to yourself, and every time I need to listen to some of the records, you huff and puff in the background, and I can't understand the thing. I'm sorry. Just. Yell at me and uh, I will stop. Gladly. So, comparing the current batch with the one from 14th January, lab entry number 42, we observe a spike in the third value, which is unusual, but it was just an experiment. But the sample was still degraded and it couldn't be used. We are not progressing as fast as I would hope, or maybe anticipate, but I still see it had a success. What do you think, Alexander? What? Um, I'm sorry, I was uh, reading through this uh, antediluvian research papers. They're useless. I said, oh. Glass, what is the matter? Oh, just everything. Is it Elga again? Oh. Or oh, Ada? He seems to have a problem with women. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very funny. No, Sasha, I don't hate women. Mon Dieu, thanks for that. I'm just getting really annoyed with being around people whose ideas are just fucked up. What happened this time? I get that Adam is in love with Helga so much that he thinks I have some kind of problem with her. But I wouldn't care about Helga if she didn't have such blind facing Ada. And Ada follows anything Helga does. It's one blind person after another. But I don't believe Ada anymore. The way she thinks, how she behaves sometimes. She can be really relentless when it comes to pushing her ideas onto others. I'm starting to feel like a puppet. If only you could hear them talking about the future like a utopia that belongs only to them. It scares me. It feels like the same shit all over again. Well, that is the unnecessarily dramatic Solnishka. What did you call me? I said, uh, you're a dumb best. <laughs> Very funny. Thanks for the support, I guess. I tell you, Ada is bad news, and that cute couple following her every move is only perpetuating her behavior. This won't go the way we all imagined when we agreed to follow her. Plus, come on. Alexander, 
Alexander. I don't understand how you can be so close with this brute. Most of the time I see him, he comes here, complains, and leaves. He's not a brute, Marie. Have you heard about the shit he has been through? I honestly worry about him. I have a bad feeling about this. Nobody knows the future. Let's focus on work, all right? Now, tell me how does it look with sample five? I was just saying that to the recorder, which now has immortalized La Tantra. It was a partial success. This is La Book Entry number uh, 99. Time, uh, 4 p.m. exactly. Dr. Asimov and I just came back from the field collecting samples from the soil, water, and plants, both treated with the formula and untreated for comparison. I have the coordinates of the place somewhere around me. Uh, wait. By the way, we should be more careful about going there next time. You are right. Uh, the gear might not protect us that well if we go there all the time. No, it's because of the outlander. Marie. Calling them outlanders seems a bit harsh. They're people like us. You're not listening. People from the Ras told me there's another group. They're calling themselves stalkers, and this area may not be safe anymore. We should finish our observation there. Boja, how many of them are there? I remember all the junkers. Those were crazy fellas. And the mercenary group running around. I bet you don't know about the people trying to live like Vikings. Now that is something that caught my attention. What's up with them? I don't know much. They're supposedly trying to live in harmony with nature, no technology. Ah, Masha, that sounds marvelous. Alexander, you work with technology all the time. Exactly. These people know what is important. If you live with nature, you appreciate it, not destroy it. Oh, so we should go back to the trees? <laughs> I mean, would living in the trees cause the mess we live in? You have a point there. You're a wholehearted agronomist, I can tell. <laughs> An agronomist who's completely unable to help you with removing this govno from the atmosphere. We will find out how to deal with the radiation, Alexander. Are you sure? With the maniacs and the radioactive grenades, uh, hasn't nature suffered enough? People never learn. They do learn, but I wish there wasn't so much violence. Can we go back to our work? This only makes me stressed. Yes. Look at this. The soil we treated feels weird. I'm not sure if spraying it with the solution will bear any fruit. Literally, if I may say so, we need to change some components. All in all, the files of the nuclear research undertaken by the Norwegians don't bring anything useful to our research. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like our little journey didn't bring anything useful. How is your stack of completely useless classified files? Yours were about something different, right? Seriously, we go through so much trouble getting these, and then we find out it's mostly useless and uninteresting. Mon Dieu. Alexander, hello? Hmm? Did you find anything at least slightly interesting? I thought that recording any notes on what we find out might be worth recording, but I'll probably throw the tape away. This, uh, this file, it is, uh, it is odd. I was curious why Norwegians are concerned with a woman. Catherine Hopper, who apparently used to code military simulations for the U.S. Department of Defense. But then she went to Norway where she tried to apply her expertise and technology to human bodies, trying to uh, push the boundaries of human regeneration. Excusez-moi. This isn't a file of hers. This is a file of her. 
This is crazy. I read that while in the US, almost a decade ago, she was working on the simulations for Able Archer, and she, citing, showed signs of unstable behavior. She was taking some kind of stimulants. I don't even know what this drug is. Yes. They kicked her out after an incident with casualties, but the text refers to another confidential file, and it looks like it's not here. Let me see. Mon Dieu, this story, it cannot be as deranged as it sounds. I wonder what happened to her. There, there, there are still more files. Maybe we'll find out. This is a copy of her research on regeneration. Alexander, this looks wild. Look, look at this. You, you have more expertise in biology. This ought to be fascinating. Macrophages, Lean 28 day. Good. Remove tissues, successfully regroup without leaving any scars. Burns, frostbite, gunshot wound. Marie, this is unbelievable. Is that even possible? Unless this is a practical joke, it seems solid. But, Yushki, do you think we could use this for protection against radiation? So instead of making the environment safe, we could be unaffected by the radiation? Exactly. You know, it, it, it still doesn't solve the problem of growing any produce in contaminated soil, but it is certain that we will receive higher doses of radiation for a long time, and iodine isn't in reality that effective. We need to go through these files and learn as much as we can. This could be a groundbreaking discovery if it's something we can make possible. I got to say this is some impressive TV she's got done. Sasha? Hmm? The code Catherine came up with her colleagues is called Ada. Like, uh, like our Ada. I don't know about Ada that much. No one does, for that matter. But she has some background in the U.S. military. I heard her say that. Are you seriously thinking this way? When I think about it, it would make sense. Yes. Listen, her age would make sense. Her expertise, her oddness. This, this would explain so much. I worked with her briefly on the jammer and I was astonished by her knowledge. Seeing her handle technology was like seeing fish swimming. So I asked her about her background, and without any hesitation, she told me that she worked for the US military. They gave her access to a lot of state-of-the-art technology, and later the Norwegian government supported her research. It never occurred to me to ask her anything more. I was never good at small talk. Yes. And I'm not sure about this. It was true, then we would be in trouble. Would we? She must be a genius. Okay, the incident that got her kicked out doesn't seem good, but we don't know what happened. Masha, the information I now hold with my hands is very dangerous. How? The way she tested the regeneration. She was severely hurting herself in various ways to test the regeneration device. First, that is admirable, but what kind of a person would be willing to do what she did? There is a chance it is a kind of a person who wouldn't be very happy about this being general knowledge. We know she can be relentless, but her intentions were always justified. But how far is she willing to go? Also, you, you, you read it yourself, an incident with human casualties. That can't be good. We know nothing about the incident. The important thing for us is that her research clearly worked. Ada looks perfectly healthy. Wouldn't you be able to make sacrifices for your research? She shot herself in the leg. I still think with her, we have the best chance to change something fundamental. 
So, you're saying we should tell everyone. I didn't say that. We need to think this through. Merde, we shouldn't be recording. Provided we will be able to find the components needed for others' device, but I'm not sure if we won't raise suspicion if we go after these specific items. I thought we decided to discuss it purely professionally and keep our opinions off the record, Alexander. I cannot keep it separated. They kicked her out, Marie. If her destructive tendencies were only affecting her alone, she would not be kicked out. Are you two okay? Yes. What do you want? You don't sound okay. Lars, close the door and sit down. Alexander, are you serious? I'm going to tell him. Out of all the people here, he should know. And are you going to tell me what this is all about? What you tell him, I'm not taking part in this. We both became part of this the moment we read those files. Lars, Ada is possibly dangerous. Tell me something I don't know. Listen, a file got into our possession about Ada. The good news is that she was successfully working on a project that might help us. Not just help us, but change humans in a way we didn't imagine. The bad news is that Adi used to work in the U.S. and worked so vigorously that it made her possibly insane and probably caused the death of an unknown number of people and got her kicked out of the U.S. fucking military. Then she worked on the regeneration device and to test it, she shot herself in the leg. Well, that's one way of saying it. Last. Ada found a way to make the human body regenerate beyond its natural limits. And she probably wasn't keen on trying it on other people first, so she hurt herself. But she is here. She's alive and looks healthy. She survived it. I think the result is the most important. Marie, the result is amazing. I still cannot wrap my head around it. She is unbelievable. But you heard Lars speaking about her actions so many times. Doesn't it complete the picture perfectly? Ada was always relentless in pursuing her goals. Until now, I agreed with her vision, but I don't think she is fit for the position she's putting herself into, especially if she had anything to do with the deaths of others. Lars, do you feel okay? I told you that. I could tell there is something weird about her. I told you! Calm down, Lars. Even though we went over this theory of Catherine Hopper being Ada over and over, and it makes a lot of sense, we still cannot be sure 100%. We still have no idea how to verify it. Did you say Catherine? Yes. Apparently, Ada is just a pseudonym based on the programming language she helped to create. My parents worked here in Norway with a Catherine. And I know something bad happened, just when everything went to shit. I'm from a military family. I know my parents would live if surviving that day would be in their control. Come on. There are many Catherines. You can't be certain it's her. This is enough, Marie. Can't you see how she's shaking? Breathe, Lars. You know this is just another episode. We are safe. Everything is going to be okay. You didn't see what I saw. You haven't been out there when it was all collapsing. Shansa! Maybe she even took part in creating this whole mess. And now she thinks she will control it all and that she will redeem herself with it. But we can't grant her this absolution. The word she used to name you scientists. It will not be her. She doesn't deserve it. Lass, do not give in yourself to the demons, please. She won't have it. She won't. Please, keep your voice down and don't do anything crazy, please. Or else we are in big trouble. This world makes animals out of people. Everyone is losing their minds. Everyone just becomes a 
hyperbole of their shadows. No wonder. None of us were ready to deal with such pressure. People's psyche can take only so much. I'm so glad we're here, in these conditions, in peace. But something tells me this won't last forever. But Sasha, we are trying to help humanity. We are not here to live peacefully and play philosophers over the current global situation. Et tu, Marie. Even you're falling down into the spiral of aggression. It's not aggression. It's survival. It's the future of the world we are trying to create here. But the fighting is reserved for other people in this world. We're here to be rational, to think, to come up with solutions to help others. I'm opposed to solving matters with violence. I think you are becoming too comfortable. You are refusing to accept the reality. Is it such an offense that I value the peace we live in here? Is it so bad that I want to just go on with my life? It is not, Alexander. I understand your point. But what are you going to do when the mayor hits the fan? I'll be probably covered with mayor. Why is everything a joke to you? The moment I won't be able to find humor in this world, that's it for me. Even if the radiation was eating me alive, I will laugh. I'm sorry, but that sounds perverse. Why are we even trying to remove the radiation then? I'm just trying to say that uh, I refuse to let go of my sense of humor. It drives me. It drives me mad. You know what is driving people mad? Ada. Look at Elga, who is already dead. Look at Adam hunting Lars. One of them is going to die and might be a thorough Lars because Adam already killed Eric. Lars is my friend. I don't want to lose him and I don't see others stopping Adam from killing him. They're killing each other for personal matters. What is Ada supposed to be doing? Stepping in and not letting her organization be destroyed from the inside. But I feel like she is happy that people who doubt her are put to silence. You are starting to sound like love. Сумасшедшая женщина, мы оба умрем из всего этого, и это будет наша вина. September 24th, lab book number, I don't know, time, 5 p.m. Today I'm just on my own. Marie, if you listen to this, I waited for you and there are things to record. We need to work. I don't know where you are. Oh, I just started recording. Last is dead. Well, he had it coming. What? Marie, he killed Helga and fucked up whole other operation. What did you expect? I expected that someone would put a stop to this. But it's been a few weeks since we saw them last. I didn't even see Ada. What are we going to do? I don't think there are many options of what we can do. Maybe we should live with our knowledge before Ada finds out that we know about her past. Or, well, we can always tell her we know and face the consequences, but I think I would rather take my chance elsewhere. Are you really willing to give up this lab, the safety, the potential we have here? I don't have to necessarily support Ada's past, but I can see her actions having a good impact and that she is heading in a direction we never tried, and maybe that can be the way to go. I believe she dealt with her past. Most of us had to when society ceased to exist. And I think Ada's vision of society isn't crazy at all. I see you have been thinking about it a lot. And probably been outside more than me. What do you think is her vision? She said it herself. She doesn't want to rob the groups, 
in the outlines of their identity. She wants them to live their lives as they are used to, as they want to, to govern themselves as they wish. But every one of them needs to be persuaded to agree to the same thing. So everyone keeps their freedom, and mainly we can get rid of the war. Have you seen other react to people who are not so sure about enforcing that? I can't imagine the group actually having freedom and still obeying her. Marie, I am sorry. I, I, I realize I too might be guilty of clutching to the past too much. And I imagine Lars was the way I am as well. And now you will never see him again. I'm afraid that my opinion about that will only cause me the trouble I'm not willing to go through. I'm sure we will come to a compromise between our views. I am not sure. I just don't agree with you. I'm sorry. Would you rather work, or do you need some time alone? Uh, I, I think I need to leave this room. Je deviendrai folle. So it seems that the radiotropic fungi are working to a certain degree and we might continue this route. Dr. Asimov has been trying different variants of how to approach using it on a larger scale in soil. Regarding the atmosphere, Hi, Ada. How can we help you? I heard that all the chaos that we have been through for the past month is your doing. We never intended to... The entirety of what is happening here falls on your shoulders, Ada. Yes, it does. That's why I'm here, at the core of this conflict. I would ask you for your explanations, but I want to be open with you. I know what you have found out, and I think you are the ones who would like some answers. Am I right? That's right. What happened in the U.S.? Is your name Catherine Hopper? What are your plans with the Ark? Unless you want to dig into your past, Dr. Asimov, don't burden yourself with mine. My past has nothing to do with the present. Catherine Hopper, although a fundamental part of me, is no more. I'm Ada now, and with Ark, I want to help humanity. I truly do, and you know it. And you know all of us now have a unique opportunity to change humanity for the better. As you found out with the gift of regeneration. You both could help me immensely. The process is still not perfect. Yes, your research is incredible. But with all the stuff we found out about you, uh, together with how you are doing with other people, can't you see that with your aid to the people outside, you only create chaos? And death. Don't blame it on me. I gave them food, medicine, even clothes. And what did they do? They kill each other over it. But do you know what I realized? All right, let them kill each other. Let's see who survives. Who can navigate this world? Who will be able to survive in the world of the future? Ada, you are not making a world of peace. You just will be left with those who can kill the best. You create unnatural conditions for them. They're not fighting to survive in this world. They're fighting to survive in your world. But Sasha, without the supplies, they would die. There isn't much left on its own in the outlands. And distributing them personally would only give those brutes thoughts about attacking us. At this point, they have little idea where the supplies are coming from. You're mistaken, Dr. Asimov. You would be surprised about the many different creative ways the Outlanders get their supplies. It is the smart who get the airdrop. I don't want people to kill each other. I want them to get as many supplies as they can. And the problem with all the groups forming is that in their numbers lies their confidence. And these groups tend to fight among each other. They focus their intellect on how to beat the other group rather than getting what they truly need. Creed kind of screws you over, oui. That's why I need them to see reason, to understand that we all need to cooperate. I don't want them to exist around me, serving me. I want them to coexist with each other. 
but to do so, we might need some power over them. So they obey common sense, the benefit of not killing others. So they obey you, Ada. What happens now? Are you gonna... I'm not going to do anything, Dr. Asimov. It seems like you two, and especially you, Alexander, are standing at a crossroads. One way leads to the Outlands. There, you would be without any aid, left on your own. And that path, considering your warm and clean place in this laboratory, might not be a fortunate one. The other path leads towards a brighter future. Let me finish. I understand the differences we have, but I'm willing to put them aside. I need you both to help me with creating a future without wars. And provided you don't try to sabotage this whole operation by running your mouth again, you can stay. War was the most horrible experience I went through. Ada, I will need a lot of explanations and clear communication throughout the whole arc, especially between Ras and Absolution. I'll be honest, I don't trust you completely, but I believe this place is where I'm most needed and most useful. I am sorry. You can make my skin, muscles, bones regenerate, but for me personally, you cannot revive my trust. I don't want to be working here, looking over my shoulder and waiting for another tragedy to happen. As you can see, not all of us are here on the same boat. Some of us still need a moment to stop for a second and deal with what went down. Lars went haywire and then he thought about it. He was a great soldier, and he found solace in continuing to be one, but his heart knew all along that it's just a temporary defense mechanism. War is horrible. I never want to experience that. And war is usually waged because of deranged individuals hiding behind altruistic notions. It is your ego, Ada, I'm afraid. Honestly, I don't believe you want war, but I've seen enough shit surrounding individuals like you. I don't want to witness it again. I respect your opinions, Dr. Dubois. I will be happy to deal with any communication problems and make sure nothing like this happens again. As for you, Dr. Asimov, I advise you to reconsider your stance, but ultimately, I cannot make you stay. Sasha, consider it. We make a good team. I know we will succeed in removing the radiation. Just imagine being part of something so important. What else do you want to do? Honestly, I just wish the rest of my life would be almost unbearably uneventful. I would love to help others doing what I love the most, science. But I don't want to be part of any politics anymore. I really just want to be at peace with myself and my surroundings. Even if that meant for me to take my last breath somewhere in the forest, in silence. Very well then. I will provide you with some supplies, of course. We'll speak later, when you're on your way. And I will need to talk to you, Dr. Dubois, as well. Just like that? You will do nothing? I don't want to repeat myself, but yes, you are free to leave. In fact, I wouldn't appreciate if you stayed while feeling such a strong opposition towards me. I will leave you now. I imagine you need to discuss this. So long. <sighs> Peace, Jess. Sasha! I don't believe in anything she said. I don't believe she'll just let me go. Did she really sound to you like someone who has something to hide? Yes. You know what? Recording our sessions has been fruitful. And we were interrupted a lot. You should replay these cassettes later, especially this one, to compare what Ada says and what she will do. 
This is Sasha. Talking to Masha in the future. <laughs> Let me know how things turned out for you, yes? It has been a great pleasure to work with such a talented professional. Best of luck, dear. Alexa. The results from the postponed research were very successful. Perhaps it can now be handed down to someone else. It might be ready for use. This is getting old. Yes? Ah, uh, hi, Mary. Uh, can I use tape recorder? It's uh, better than mine. For what? A uh, message for me to the Outlanders. Care to explain? You'll hear it. I just, uh, do you have enough cassettes or do I need to use mine? Also, uh, I need to do it now. Use your cassettes. You seem to be in a hurry, all geared up. I am. Where to? Uh, mm, Adam? To find the village in the south. Why? Are you hunting Alexander? Uh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, I'm just keeping an eye on him. Bordel de merde! I shouldn't have said where he was going. Fuck! Mary, I'm not going to hurt him. I'm just checking. Learn to pronounce my name, you tall toy soldier. Here, record whatever you want. 